In an optimistic turn of events, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft might finally embark on a crewed flight this spring. Let's hope that this time around, the spacecraft doesn't encounter any further issues. More importantly, we're keeping our fingers crossed for the safety of the astronauts on board. Failure is simply not an option when it comes to crewed missions. Tune in to today's episode of Great SpaceX to learn more about this exciting development. Picture this engineer's nightmare. After nearly a decade of meticulous spacecraft construction, rigorous testing, and countless safety checks, you're on the verge of launching NASA astronauts into space in just a month. Then, out of the blue, comes the bombshell. The tape, meticulously wrapped around the concealed wires within the spacecraft, meant to shield them from short circuits, is flammable. Now, faced with the looming threat of a catastrophic fire, the only option is to painstakingly dismantle the entire spacecraft to locate and rectify the issue. It's a daunting task, but the stakes couldn't be higher. Adding insult to injury, another critical flaw emerged. The key link in the parachutes responsible for safely guiding the capsule back to Earth is composed of material that falls short of our stringent safety standards. This revelation adds yet another item to the laundry list of technical issues plaguing the Starliner program. Program, which has already faced numerous setbacks, pushing back its inaugural crewed test flight from 2017 to the present year. In response, engineers have been hard at work over the past year overhauling crucial components of the parachute system and painstakingly removing approximately 1.3 kilometers of the flammable tape known as P213 from the Starliner spacecraft. We've successfully resolved a number of issues that previously delayed the launch from last summer, remarked Steve Stitch, the manager of NASA's commercial crew program. We conducted a successful parachute test in early January, incorporating modifications to enhance the strength of the parachutes. The results were promising, and we thoroughly reviewed the data. Scheduled for liftoff from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, the upcoming flight known as Crew Flight Test, or CFT, was initially targeted for the 22nd of April. However, the launch date has been pushed back to the 26th, although this delay is not attributed to any technical shortcomings on Boeing's part. In the factory over at Boeing, uh, the Starliner spacecraft is uh, pretty much closed out. Dated Stitch during the NASA administrator briefing at the Kennedy Space Center on February 28th. Uh, we've loaded uh, um, the, the fluid for the cooling system. The next big event really is to load propellant on the crew module and propellant in the service module, and that'll happen in mid-March. We're going to work hand in hand with Joel on the right decision points to go uh, to go fuel Starliner. As Joel said, it's a busy time, so we may adjust the date. Right now, we're targeting the crew flight test in, in late April. Stitch also mentioned that the launch date for Starliner may be affected by the availability of a docking port, so the late April date appears to be somewhat fluid. The good news for Boeing is that the spacecraft appears to be in good condition to fly, pending additional flight readiness reviews. CFT will send NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and SUNY Williams to the International Space Station for roughly a 10-day mission. Starliner will launch atop a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. On Wednesday, February 21st, the rocket's main stage was transferred from the nearby Advanced Spaceflight Operations Center to the Integration Facility, where it'll wait integration with the rocket's upper Centaur stage and Starliner. The spacecraft will carry NASA astronauts SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore to the orbiting laboratory for a short stay of about one to two weeks before returning to a landing site in the southwest United States. The mission will test the end-to-end -end capabilities of the Starliner system, including launch, docking, and return to Earth. After the successful completion of the mission, NASA will initiate the final process of certifying Starliner and its systems for crewed rotation missions to the space station. This delay indeed comes at a considerable cost, doesn't it? Boeing was selected by NASA in 2014 to build this vehicle alongside rival SpaceX. Elon Musk's company successfully delivered its Dragon Crew vehicle in 2020, and since then it has completed 13 orbital flights, 8 for NASA and 4 for commercial customers. The question arises, what went wrong? How could one of the world's most legendary aerospace companies fail so miserably in its race with Elon Musk's space? 
SpaceX and still be grounded while its competitor has been launching astronauts to the space station since 2020. One top NASA official described Boeing's inability to get its CST-100 Starliner capsule into regular use as an existential challenge. Some NASA officials believe that one cause may be the way the commercial crew program was structured, a fixed price contract after years of cost plus contracts that allowed contractors to pass on any excess expenses they encountered during project development to NASA. That commercial model is not exactly the way Boeing was structured, NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy said in an interview. So they've had to work through that and make sure that they're resourcing it, and you know, it's tough. You've got to put a lot of skin in the game. That's not the way they've been structured from the beginning. But NASA, eager for Boeing to commence flights to reduce reliance solely on SpaceX, hesitates to criticize Boeing. However, regardless of market conditions, many of Boeing's problems are self-inflicted. Throughout the years, the program has encountered repeated delays and technical challenges ranging from severe software errors to corroded valves. In early 2023, Boeing had delayed a hoped-for July launch when it discovered issues with the capsule's parachute system design and identified flammable tape inside the craft. Now, for Boeing, launching Starliner goes beyond mere flight. It's about proving the company's reliability in delivering programs crucial to national interests. The Starliner program encountered issues right from the beginning. In an attempt to streamline some of its major aerospace projects, Boeing created a new division in 2015 to oversee their development from concept to reality. Under the leadership of a senior executive, engineers from various sectors of the company, commercial aviation, defense, and space, were brought together to more effectively apply engineering expertise, development program best practices, and program management and integration from across Boeing to our most important development activities, as stated by the company at the time. However, this move resulted in unexpected challenges. The KC-46 aerial refueling tanker, the 777X commercial airplane, and projects like the Space Launch System rocket and Starliner spacecraft were suddenly grouped together. Instead of driving efficiencies, this integration led to problems, according to industry officials familiar with the matter. The commercial airplanes meant to be produced with some frequency had little in common with military aircraft designed for combat, and even less with rockets and spacecraft, which operated at a much slower pace. In a briefing, Mark Nappy, the third Boeing executive to lead the Starliner program, acknowledged that some of the spacecraft's problems originated from its early development days. It could be questionable, should we be catching this, the, this, these types of things this late, and that might be because, you know, there was a certain sense of optimism when some of the designs were done, some of the processes were created many years ago, and, uh, and they led to some of these things um, kind of creeping their way through the system. John Shannon, who in December was appointed Vice President of Boeing Exploration Systems, pushed back on the notion that consolidating different programs under one division was a mistake. He emphasized that under the division, programs could coordinate their engineering schedules effectively to prevent conflicts. And if we were working separately in our individual divisions, we wouldn't have had that level of communication. We could also allocate engineering talent between programs as needed, he added. However, despite these efforts, the challenges with Starland continue to increase. Until now, given the choice, I believe no one would dare to board this spacecraft. Good luck and Godspeed to the first crew on Starliner. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.